most numerous tank in Russian army is the T-72 tank, more precisely the T-72B3 and its improved variant T-72B3 model 2016 or T-72B3 UBH. T-72B3 is meant as a rather cheap upgrade for already existing T-72B tanks in Russian arsenal. The upgrade is meant to bring the tanks as close to the modern standard as possible, but without wasting a lot of money, and as such leaves a lot to be desired. But in 2006 there was hope. Before T-72B3 was revealed, there has already been a proposed upgrade for T-72B tanks. And it's way better. The upgrade was called T-72B2 Ragatka, and in this video we will take a look at this marvel of Russian technology and see what actually went wrong. Before we go any further, a quick word from my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. As I previously stated, in 2006 a new vehicle was demonstrated at an exhibition in Nizhny Tagil. The vehicle in question was T-72B2 Ragatka, which translates to slingshot. The vehicle was demonstrated as a proposition for upgrading the Russian T-72B tanks which at the time still used old Contact-1 explosive reactive armor, old guns, fire control system and engine from the mid-80s, and were more than a decade behind the Western tanks. T-72B2 upgrade included improvements to all aspects, including firepower, fire control system, protection and mobility. The firepower was improved with installation of 2A46M5 gun, which was first used on T-90A tanks just a year before. The gun offered many improvements compared to 2A46M1 gun previously installed on T-72B tanks. The accuracy was improved by 15-20% to and the gun allowed more powerful APFSDS projectiles to be loaded and fired from the tank. Previously the best APFSDS the T-72B could fire was 3BM42 Mango, which was already obsolete by the time, since it appeared in the mid-80s. The improved gun could fire the newly developed 3BM-59 Sminets-1 projectile, which has an improved penetration over 3BM-42. For comparison, 3BM-42 could penetrate 220-250 mm at 60 degrees, depending on the source, and 3BM-59 can penetrate 320-350 mm targets sloped at 60 degrees, which is a noticeable improvement. It was also planned to adopt a new multi-purpose high-explosive fragmentation projectile that could be used as a regular high-explosive fragmentation or with the air burst ability, which would be very useful when dealing with infantry. Russians did apparently have that kind of projectile in a limited use, since some old information about the T-80 UK tank that was adopted in the early 90s describes it as having the same ability. But it's not until T-90M tank in 2017 that we actually see this projectile being demonstrated so the tank's firepower was pretty advanced for the time. The fire control system was greatly improved with the introduction of Sosna U multi-channel sight with day and night channels that included Catherine FC thermal imager, and served as an ATGM guiding sight as well. The old T-72B sight was still present but was only to be used as backup. Sosna U was really good for the new tank, the second generation Catherine FC thermal imager was integrated into the sight, and since it was second generation, it had comparable performance to other thermal sites used on Western tanks. But Russia at the time could not produce their own thermal imagers, so the French company Thales was exporting their Catherine imagers to Russia, and those were used on all of the Russian domestic tanks, including T-90A, T-80UE1 and planned T-72B2. Russia would later buy the license for those thermal imagers and then start making their own, as well as start procuring thermal imagers from Belarus, but that's not important right now. The gunner's sight was improved a lot, but the commander's was not. The commander of the vehicle still had access to an old binocular sight with passive and active infrared, 
which was nowhere near as good as what Western tanks brought to the table, Commander's own panoramic sight with Thermal Imager. The Commander's observation ability during the day was not very problematic, but during the night the passive infrared offered a very, very limited view, so for good visibility an infrared searchlight had to be used, which would give away the tank's position. Not to mention that actual target spotting is a lot easier with thermal imagers. This is an issue that still persists on most modern T-72B3 variants, and to my knowledge there are no plans to remedy this issue in the near future. This becomes even more confusing when you realize they are making export T-72s with panoramic thermal sights, which even they claim a marginal improvement in performance over the old system. So, the firepower and fire control system appear to be the same as T-72B3s, which was not that bad for 2006. But it actually brought something else to the table, a muzzle reference sensor. This device serves to detect any slight bendings in the gun barrel due to the external factors, and inputs the data into the ballistic computer for even better improvement in accuracy. This device will only come to light again on T-90M tank, no other tank in Russian service has this device. The tank is also said to have a navigational device, which is also something T-72B3 never got. The protection of the tank is greatly increased with the introduction of relic Explosive Reactive Armor, which offers a good improvement over Contact 1 and Contact 5 Explosive Reactive Armors used on other Russian tanks. Main difference between Relict and Contact 5 is Relict's ability to affect tandem-shaped heat. Even the most modern T-72B3 still uses old Contact 5 on the front. And no, it's not Relict. All media articles like to use the fact that Relict side skirts are being used to claim how the tank has Relict, without mentioning it's only mounted on the sides. For context, in 1999 the tests were conducted on both the ATU and T90 equipped with Contact 5 ERA. Both were penetrated 3 out of 5 times by the tandem shaped RPG 29 rockets, which reportedly have around 750mm of penetration but they could not be penetrated by PG-7BR from RPG-7 with 650mm penetration. This would mean that any tandem-shaped heat with at least 750mm penetration would be enough to penetrate even the most modern T-72B3, and a lot of AT gems and rockets already fulfill those requirements. With installation of Relic, T-72B2 removes that risk. Not only does Relic offer better protection against tandem heat, but the protection against regular heat and APFSDS, it also provides much better ERA coverage. The coverage of T-72B3 with Contact 5 is just sad to say the least. While the areas most likely to be hit are covered with ERA, the protection is full of bare areas which can be exploited. T-72B2 equipped with Relic, as I said, noticeably increases the coverage, which in turn increases the tank's protection. The protection is even further enhanced with laser warning receivers, which warn the crew when the tank is being painted by a laser from a laser rangefinder or laser-guided ATGMs. The tank was demonstrated with an Akitka cover which is said to reduce tank's thermal signature by 2 times and radar signature by up to 6 times, but since it is a cover it can be used on any tank, so it's not something tied to Ragatka only. The mobility of the tank was improved with V92 1000 horsepower diesel engine with 3920 Nm of torque, previously developed for T90A tanks. This engine was meant to replace a V84 840 horsepower engine with 3350 Nm of torque from the mid 80s, which is still used on most T72B3 tanks in Russian service. Only the improved T72B3 UBH tanks have an even further improved V92 S2F 1130 horsepower engine, but majority are still base T72B3 tanks with the old engine. But the tank also still had the manual transmission like other Russian tanks at the time. Only today T90M, T72B3 UBH and T14 Armata received automatic transmissions, but the mobility was supposed to be better when compared to T72B and regular T72B3 tanks, even though Relic increases the weight of the vehicle. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. At the end, T-72B2 would have been an excellent upgrade for the Russian T-72B tanks. As a matter of fact, it would have been the best Russian tank at the time. So what happened? Well, the same as with any good tank that was supposed to enter service, money. 
The project was too expensive, especially when considering the fact that over a thousand T-72 tanks needed to be upgraded to that standard. When you're upgrading that amount of vehicles, every bit counts, and T-72 B2 brought way more to the table than the Russian ministry could afford, especially at the time. So the project had to be abandoned in favor of a much cheaper T-72 B3. But who knows, maybe the project will be revived in the near future. They started implementing Relict on a lot of their tanks recently, so it might become cheap enough to upgrade all T-72 tanks with it. And if they add the same panoramic sight lake on the export T-72B1MS, that would make a decent vehicle that could be compared to other modern tanks. But only time will tell. That would be all, thanks for watching. If you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.